Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to my YouTube channel where we learn construction. We learn more, we learn better, we learn always. Today we're going to be talking about career pathways. I'm a professor of construction management and I've spent my career in all facets of construction. So I think I have some pretty good insight into this topic today, which is going to be, is a degree necessary for a career in construction? I've been seeing different questions on LinkedIn. I've been asked many questions over the years regarding this. And so I'm going to try to articulate something that makes some kind of sense today. All right, so let's take a look. First, I want to start with there's no right or wrong way to do something. There are a lot of different pathways that you can take if you want a career in construction. And I don't want to discourage anybody for any reason on pursuing a career in construction. I think it's a great way to earn a living. I think it's very satisfying. I mean, where do you get a chance to build something for somebody that's going to be lasting? Where do you get a chance to contribute to society? You know, you're building homes for people. They're going to live in it, raise their families. Uh, you could be building hospitals. You could be building shopping malls, which provides basically people with the food and basically the clothing that they need to survive. Roads, bridges, highways. Where would we be without construction? So first off, just starting, it's a, it's a great career. Now, myself, that's me in the picture. When I was, I'm going to say 19, I bought my first house fairly young and I did two trades. I worked in my dad's company and I did brick and stone masonry and I did carpentry. And so I started in a trade. I did not start with a degree. Uh, I kind of did those trades. I received an opportunity. I did formal apprenticeships, uh, working very much with the hands. And that was a good pathway for me doesn't mean it has to be a pathway for you. Um, there's a lot of different um, entries into construction. And let's just take a quick look over at this next slide just to give you a little bit better sense of things. And it should give you a good viewpoint as to uh, where you, know, you might be interested. You might be interested in the design side of things, uh, of becoming an architect. Well, if you want to become an architect, you do need a degree, all right? So I'm in Canada, United States, very similar, UK, very similar. I'm sure Australia, very similar. So um, if you want to be an architect, you do need a degree. Now, if you want to design, at least in Canada or Ontario, Canada, um, smaller type buildings like houses, we have what we call part nine of the building code, something like three stories or less, uh, it's possible to design those without necessarily having a degree. You could be an architectural technologist, you could be an architectural technician, you could be working for an architect, all right? And in that case, you don't necessarily need a degree either. So, but if you want to be a architect, that professional designation, then typically you do need a degree. Same thing with engineering. Uh, if you want to design structural uh, components for a building and you have to put what they call your stamp on it, which means that you're ensuring this design, uh, you have to be a professional engineer. And so in that case, you do need a degree. And in both cases, not just a degree, you also have to have uh, followed the requirements for becoming an architect. In many cases, it might require a certain amount of work and passing certain exams, all right, depending on your jurisdiction and country, etc. So typically that's that's going to be kind of a, a pathway there. Then the other way into construction is through a trade. Well, depending on again the type of trade, some trades are required to have a license and other trades they're more what you call, you can get a license in them, uh, voluntary regulated. You don't necessarily have to have a license. And again, this can be dependent on jurisdiction. Uh, like in our jurisdiction, uh, for the most part, if you want to be a plumber, an electrician, you want to work in HVAC, uh, steam fitting, there are required trades, mandatory licensing in those trades. If you want to be a carpenter, a bricklayer, a drywaller, um, taping, drywall, installing drywall, there are licenses that you can get, 
but you don't have to have those licenses. So that means you don't necessarily have to have that. Now, I would strongly recommend that if you're working in that trade, why not get the license, right? Like that, that would make sense to me. Uh, so if I was working in that trade, I would, in most cases, if it's uh, a trade like say carpentry, you just have to kind of prove that you work those hours certain amount of hours it's very hours based like maybe it's uh 5000 6000 hours in that particular trade and you can prove that you worked that hours in that trade and you worked with somebody that was qualified in that trade then you can usually challenge the exams uh or many governments they have apprenticeship programs where you can go to school and usually it's while you're working you can work go for period short periods of schooling and then once you've completed that, you still have to write your license for that particular trade. The advantages of having a license is, you know, there's some organizations, say a hospital wants to hire a carpenter to work on staff, to do maintenance work. They're going to be looking for somebody that has the license. They're not going to be looking for somebody that doesn't have the license, right? So that gives you a little bit more opportunities. If you're just going to frame houses as an example, um, nice if you've got that trade license, but it probably isn't going to make a big difference. They're going to, you know, if you're working for somebody or you're working in crews or you're doing piecework, it's really what you do and what you produce that matters. Uh, so in that case, you really kind of have to prove yourself. And I should say that about all construction. Construction's like, it's not the most forgiving industry. Like there's an expectation that you can do stuff. If you say that you're a carpenter, there's an expectation that you can perform carpentry work at a reasonable pace and a good quality. Uh, if that's what you're representing yourself as. So that's where, again, serving a formal apprenticeship, or if you work with somebody that's really a craftsperson and they taught you the ropes over the years, or if you've really put in a lot of effort to improve yourself in these areas as you've been learning, then you will easily satisfy that. If you haven't, then that's, that probably means it's going to be the tougher road for you. Uh, so that's what I mean by construction's um, a tough industry that way. There's high expectations. Um, est the next three, estimator, site manager, and project manager. This is where there are degrees that apply to these areas. Like, for example, at my college, we have a construction management degree. And they cover off these. So if you want to become an estimator, we have a lot of estimating courses in our program. If you want to be a site manager, site super, we have a lot of courses on the aspects of site management in our degree. If you want to be a project manager, we have a lot of courses in that. So by the time you do a four-year degree, there are different kind of streams, if you will. And you'd start at the bottom. You wouldn't start as like an estimator. You might start as a junior estimator. You might start as a project coordinator or an assistant to a project manager. It all depends on the size, the scope, and the levels of positions within a project. But you would have that entry-level skill that you could get yourself in there if you have a degree. It's helpful, but that's where I say it's not required. Like I, I know I have a lot of viewers that watch my channel, you know, thank you very much for that, by the way. But I know I have, you know, in the millions of viewers that watch this channel, and I know a lot of you, well, how could I possibly afford to take four years to do a degree? And that's a fair assessment. So if you can't, maybe you do start as a trade, right? Like an apprentice, you start very, very low. Maybe you start as a laborer and you're just doing basically um, heavy work, you know, basically, digging trenches, breaking concrete, that sort of thing. But I would be looking then for the opportunity to get into a trade. Uh, what happens, unfortunately, sometimes you work as a laborer and you actually get more paid more than an apprentice and you don't want to become an apprentice because that's going to drop your pay. But I would definitely do that just so that I could get a trade, right? It makes your skills more valuable. Now you get into that trade and you, you know, you're somebody that likes learning. You look, you're watching this. You like learning, right? And so you look at that and, well, I'm a trade. Well, maybe you become a four person and that leads crews. So what are the things that I need to learn to be a better four person? Well, again, you can watch a lot of the different playlists that I have on site management, project management, and get a lot of ideas on that. And then you work it, you apply yourself. And then within that company, you know, and if it's not a great company, you look for where you can shift to a better company or a better boss that will have respect 
for you in your career and help you, mentor you to getting better. If you're working for somebody that has no respect on that, could care less, that's fine. Keep earning your living, but at the same time, be looking for a better place. There are a lot of better places if that's where you're at. And so, but you've got a little bit of an in that way. You started laboring, you started then apprenticing, you become a tradesperson, now you become a forward person. Look, if you can't afford a degree, then you could look at different certifications. There's all kinds of certifications that can help you in here, that can help you in here, and that can help you in here, right? Maybe you want to go after a PMP, Project Management Professional designation. Maybe you want to go after, in Canada, we have something called Gold Seal Project Manager you might want to go after. Uh, PMP is very good because it's global no matter where you are, but the only problem with it is it's kind of like everything in project management. Uh, but you could do it and you could do it on your own time while you're working. So you could learn that. Uh, CM Lean, Certificate of Management of Lean Construction. I teach that at the Construction Institute of Canada, tcic.ca. And uh, that's run through the Associated General Contractors of America. And it's a good so it's a good certification to have and it's something that you could do. There's all kinds of different certifications that you could do while you work. So if you want to advance yourself, then once you have some of that, then you could start looking at, well, can I transition from four person to site manager? Could I, or am I more wanting to get into this stream? And what are my opportunities? Because I'm telling you, Employers respect people that look like they're really interested in bettering themselves, right? So that gets us into the next area, but it's helpful, but it's not mandatory. Now, I am like on the next area, I'm not denigrating having a degree. A degree is great because it gets you in the door if, without this other pathway, right? So it, it is another methodology, another way of getting you in. And that that's one of the issues we deal with in our industry. Uh, we, we, we scream and yell that we're, you know, we don't have skilled people, yet our, many of our contractors don't want to spend the time to train people to be better, right? So it's like this catch-22 that, yeah, we don't have trained people, and then we don't want to train people. It's sort of like, okay, well, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Um, so I have some issues with that uh, kind of thinking too. But a degree can definitely get you in the drawer. So think of it this way, an employer will look at it like this. You spent four years learning the fundamentals of construction that someone without a degree does not have. So I'm an employer. I'm taking somebody from school, they have a degree, or they have an associate degree, or in Canada, a two-year technician or three-year technologist diploma. Whatever they've done, that stuff they know that I don't have to train them on, right? That's a big help for me. So that's helpful. That gets a lot of people in the door. And that's why a lot of employers, they look for that first. I've got somebody with this and I got somebody with nothing. Well, unless you've got some sort of connection or you're like fantastic in an interview and you get that far, this person is going to get that job before you do, right? Or you start as a laborer. Well, then you got an advantage. You already get into that company. It's a good company. You work your way into a trade. It basically you go from the trade. You get that um, apprenticeship done. You get the trade. You get a four person, and you're ambitious, and you're working it, and you're doing courses on your own time, and certifications on your own time. And before you know it, you know a lot of stuff, right? Hands-on experience. Like I never regret having done two trades, right? It really gives me a firm understanding of how you have to do something. So there's nothing wrong with that. And I, for people that have a degree, there, if you get an opportunity to do some hands-on stuff for a few months or a few years, that's a positive thing, right? That's a positive thing because you understand how things work. I remember I had a professor at University of Toronto in building science and uh, he always said the best engineers are engineers that grew up on a farm. Why? Because on a farm, you have to figure out how to do things. You have to figure out how to fix the roof when it leaks. You have to fix the porch when it's basically rotting. You have to fix the tractor when it doesn't work. There's not, you know, a garage nearby. There's not a handy, you gotta do these things yourself. And so that means when you design something, you design it like you have to build it and then it makes it a very buildable product. Same thing with architecture as well. So do you have to have a degree? 
No, you do not have to have a degree. Is a degree positive? Yes, it's very positive. So myself, professor of construction management, I did two trades, but I also did a business degree and an MBA. And that really helped me, my understanding of finance, of business administration, of project management, of working with people, the soft skills, of communication. So that was really a boost to me from trade, running the business, professor, and then doing a lot of consulting and training because I can shift gears. For me, that was a road less traveled perhaps, but there are so many roads to be traveled. And just think about yourself. Nobody knows exactly the road, but if you're thinking all the time that you want to learn more, learn better, learn always, then you're gonna be successful whatever the pathway is over time with a career in construction. This is my mindset on this. So I'm Tom Stevenson. Hopefully this gives you some motivation to start working on improving yourself. Uh, if you like this video, please click subscribe and uh, leave a comment. And there's lots of playlists that you can follow. So have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.